And, I, and I'd like to come back to another really important point that we did write an article. In fact, the first article we wrote about this was in The Spectator. And it was in the New York Times on the weekend as well. And we're just about to put out another update of our review. When you do a PCR test, you basically amplify the amount of RNA. You put it into a DNA copy and then you exponentially double that amount of DNA. And that's called the cycle threshold. And the more times you do that, the less virus you start out with. And this is important because you can basically pick up a single copy of RNA in an individual. There is a complete difference between you being infectious, which is about seven days from the onset of symptoms to about at day eight, you cannot find infectious people apart from the few people who end up on ITU who are worsening. We have found RNA shedding in evidence for 78 days because the RNA is only 20 base pairs long and it takes much longer for you to degrade the RNA. So when you're picking up asymptomatic people, you have no idea if they have active infection or did they have it two months ago because you intermittently shed this RNA and it's the same for all viruses. Now you can put in a threshold level which says you are infectious, which is a cycle threshold of about 25. And if you do that, you can pick up the people who are infectious. But the way we're deploying the test at the moment is in a sort of ragbag way that says, whatever amount of RNA you've got on board, you are positive. And we are going to see this move forward. And we've wrote this about two or three times in the, in the Spectator and kept moving forward the discussion. But it's now on the radar because there are 25 studies that have now looked at this and 10 have come in the last three weeks. So this idea is becoming more important.